Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So, today's video is going to be really nice and chilled. I fancied the chin wag with you guys. I also fancied getting ready on camera, so hair and makeup. I've already done my skincare, so my skin is looking nice and fresh. Um, and I actually put a Q&A box out on Instagram yesterday and asked you guys for questions over any kind of topic, anything you want to ask, because I just want to sit and chat and catch up and... Yeah, that's basically it. Thought I would do my hair first of all, and then I'll go into my makeup and answering the questions. So I am working with Tangle Teaser on this section of the video, which I'm very, very happy about. I have been a fan of Tangle Teaser for so many years now, and I'm very excited to be sharing my favorite products with you. So the first thing is this little contraption. Oh, there's hair on it. Sorry about that. This little contraption here, small but mighty. This is the scalp exfoliator and massager. It's a dual purpose tool and it works at massaging your scalp and exfoliating it. I have mentioned that in the past I used to suffer with psoriasis in my scalp, which I've managed to cure or it's cured itself, I don't really know. Um, and it's definitely at bay now. However, I do still struggle with a really dry scalp. And I don't know whether that's because of my extensions or it's just the kind of scalp that I have. But this little thing has been amazing at helping me get rid of that dry scalp. So you can probably see the teeth are quite long and they're very, very, very flexible. These work at removing dead skin cells and product buildup. They don't recommend you use this with extensions. I do have extensions, but I don't use it on my extensions. So I really only use it like around the frame of my face, down the parting and like the top section. I'm using it on dry hair. I always use it on dirty hair. So like I say, I use it a couple times a week and this is on two day old hair. I'm just going around all the sections that I don't have any extensions in and you can see the product um, build up and also my dry skin start to come off with these teeth. You can also see there how bendy and flexible the teeth are, which is amazing. It makes it super comfortable, but it also means that it really works well. This little scalp exfoliator and massager would make the most perfect stocking filler for anybody, but also all of the Tangle Teeth brushes would be such a beautiful Christmas gift for anyone in your life. So mums, sisters, brothers, dads, anyone can use them. Outside is longer teeth and then the in, in the middle section is shorter teeth and these are designed to hit pressure points of the scalp and really give you that massage and it, honestly it feels so so nice this is how you hold it so you kind of just stick whatever amount of fingers in there that you want but it means you get a really good push at the scalp and the power of the teeth really is kind of controlled by your hand which is really really helpful so that is number one love it so much i don't use it every single day but i'd say like twice a week just to kind of remove that build up as i go let me take my hair out of this towel this has been freshly washed this morning it's very kind of knotty it gets really knotty around the top section but this brush has been an absolute savior it's the wet detangler brush it is definitely their most popular brush and i can see why so when your hair is wet that's when it's in its most fragile state and these teeth are very very flexible very very soft they really help to reduce breakage and seamlessly like flex over any tangles never found a brush yet that glides through my hair the way this one does it's so good takes out all of my knots in seconds look at that crazy so you can use this in the shower and you can use it on wet hair you can also use it on dry hair but i personally only use it for wet hair it is really great for in the shower if you're putting on like a conditioning mask to just brush through the mask and like distribute it through your hair um, in the shower. So there are four versions of this brush but I have the regular version. So now I'm going to go down and blow dry my hair with you. done and I've left them to set for probably like 15 minutes so just make sure there's no heat at all left in your hair before you brush them out I've also popped these in just to kind of frame my face a little bit I'm going to finish off with the ultimate styler brush you can use obviously on natural hair you can use it on extensions like I have and um, you can use it on wigs you can use it on weaves you can use it on clip-on extensions so it's really really great at just gliding over um, your hair but also any kind of extension which I actually think is the reason I've managed to keep my extensions in for like six months. I'm way past the point of a refit. I have an appointment next week, but I have had these extensions in for like six or seven months, which is crazy. And normally they start coming out after about four months, especially with a normal hairbrush because it like catches on them and pulls them out. Whereas this just glides over. So this just smooths and shines the hair. I don't know how they do it, but they literally, it makes your hair like shiny. It looks like you've put finishing spray on, but you can see how nicely it just glides over all my extensions and also just makes these curls look a lot less kind of tight 
and more just super like effortless. Okay, so this is obviously the brushed out side and this is the side that is not brushed, brushed out. You can see how glossy it looks. It's got that really lovely sheen on it. It also just looks much fuller and healthier and I think that is the best way to do your curls. I hate when curls are left unbrushed. Um, so this is the best tool for getting those kind of undone, loose kind of waves after you've curled it. Obviously the longer you leave your curls to set, the more tight the curls are, the more like bounce the curl's gonna have. If you brush it straight away, it's gonna take a lot of the curl out. So I mean, I like both ways. It just depends what kind of hair I want that day. So now you can see, I just have that really lovely kind of like looser kind of mermaid waves. Not too tight, it's still really lovely and shiny. And equally, it hasn't brushed out my curls, which is what you'll find will happen if, if you use like normal brush. But the teeth on this, because they're so flexible, you can see they're really, really flexible, really, really soft as well. And they also have longer and shorter ones and they just glide through the curls. Anyway, I'll pop all the Tangled Teaser stuff down below in the description box if you want to shop. And now we're gonna get onto the Q&A and the makeup section of the video. I'm actually gonna just sit on the floor for this because it means I close up to the mirror and I can do my makeup a little bit better. So I'm just popping back in these little grips just to clip my hair back for my face. Like I say, I I'll start on Instagram for some questions and I've screenshotted some of the ones I think would be good to chat to you guys about. So let's start on something not so deep. Do you still suffer with melasma? If so, how do you control it? So for those of you that have followed me for a while, you will know that I suffered really badly with pigmentation, especially across my top lip and kind of in my hairline. I did get a chemical peel for that. There is a video on my channel. I'm starting off with a bit of primer. Um, yeah, so if you've followed me for a while, you'll know I suffered really badly with melasma and I got a chemical peel right at the start of lockdown, which was the perfect time to get a chemical peel because I couldn't go outside and you look crazy for, I think it's about 10 days. I definitely would not have wanted to be outside. Um, so that was very, very intense, very intrusive, very really strong peel. And that did amazing at helping my skin as well. Like, pimples and scarring but also really really helped with my melasma and since then I've just been taking extra extra care of it by wearing SPF every day whenever I'm in the sun I wear a hat I try and just sit in the shade as much as possible I think it's one of those things that if you have it and you're prone to it you're always going to kind of have it to some degree so if you I'll find a picture and put it on screen next to me of what it used to be like before the peel and then you can see what it's like now so it's definitely still a bit there you can see I've got this like weird little Thing on my head and I've definitely got some melasma all around here. It comes back in the sun, I get like a shadow though, more, more of a shadow rather than like an actual line of darker skin. Um, but I'm more than happy with where it's at at the minute, like it's so much better than it ever was. So cannot complain. I think eventually I will end up having to do another peel further down the line, but for the minute I'm quite happy with where it is. I do have lots of kind of like freckles and just different colors on my face. But like I say, compared to what it was, I couldn't, I cannot complain, it's amazing. Another easy one to ease us in <laughs> is if I'm gonna get a second dog or not. I'm desperate, I mean desperate to get a second dog. Like I would have one yesterday if I could. The um, issue is Johnny is not 100% there yet and he wants to wait until Biggie is 100% okay with strangers and being out the house with us and so there's no stress surrounding him before we introduce another dog. Whereas I think he is, almost 100% there and I actually think having a second dog will really help him um so we're kind of in a bit of conflict at the minute because I want one and Johnny doesn't <laughs> do you think um by summer next year we will definitely have one I really am pushing to get one in January but we will see you see I really really miss Beanie <laughs> and I do wonder if I would ever compare a dog to him which I don't actually think like if I really sit and think about it I don't think I will but I do have that in the back of my mind. Like I still miss him so much and I don't know if I would a new dog and just keep comparing him to Bean. However, I did put that on my Instagram and so many of you guys who unfortunately have also lost pets said that they had the same worry and it was absolutely not an issue. Like you just love them in their own right. So yeah, if it was up to me, I would have a dog right now, a second dog. And I think we're gonna to stick to Frenchies, you know. We did kind of contemplate other breeds. I'd love a Staffy, but I feel like with us, it's just, we want to just stick to what we know. So yeah, I already have its name picked out as well. I've had its name picked out since, since Bean was alive. <laughs> okay, let's get a little bit deeper. I feel like we should address the elephant in the room. So for the last, I'd say three months, since summer. So maybe from like August time, I have had the most 
intense amount of comments, DMs, um, YouTube comments, with people constantly asking me if I am pregnant. And the answer is no, I am not pregnant. I have though gained a little bit of weight and that's fine. I actually remember sitting down talking to you guys like in summer because my filler went a bit funny. Do you remember my cheeks went all weird? So I remember sitting down, I thought it was because I'd put on weight, but actually it's because my filler just went funny. I think it was since I had COVID. But anyway, I remember sitting down chatting to you guys and saying, I've put on weight, like I have put on weight. And everyone in the comments was like, no, you haven't, like, but I have, I literally have just gained weight. So this is another question that came up. It says, have you put weight on? If so, how much? You're still as stunning as ever, regardless. Thank you very much for the compliment. Um, so yes, I have put on weight. I don't know how much I've put on because I don't weigh myself and I haven't weighed myself in years and years and years. The thing is, you guys have to remember, I've been on line, on Instagram and YouTube, since I was just turned 20. Didn't have any boobs, I was very, very skinny. And yeah, you gotta remember that I've been on here for six years. So of course my body's gonna change. Also, I feel like 20 to 26 is quite a important age jump. Like I feel like a lot, your body changes, your mind changes, like a lot of things change in that age um, bracket. The change that happened to me was a bit of weight gain and I actually really like it. I don't mind about it at all. I will say I have been extremely, extremely unhealthy the last like six weeks um, for a number of reasons. Um, there have just been a lot of stress going on in my life and just a lot of a lot of external things. So I feel like maybe I have been kind of comfort eating. <laughs> but yeah, now I am back on the healthy bandwagon and I'm not drinking, actually I'm not drinking at all right now. Um, and I'm not eating anything bad and I'm just trying to get myself into a better place because when I eat healthy I feel good and that's really the main reason. And then another thing that I am getting asked on the daily is if I've had a boob job. <laughs> and no, I have not had a boob job. I actually was contemplating a boob job um, probably about a year ago but I'm glad I didn't do that because had I done that and then gained this weight I'd have massive massive melons. So yeah, no, I have not had a boob job. My boobs just grew when I put on a bit of weight. Actually, I think they've grown a lot. They've gone up probably like a cup or two. Actually, I'd say like two cup sizes. Um, I used to be able to fit into a 34B if I needed to. Normally I wear a C for comfort, but now a 34C is tight and it, it's tight across my ribs and my chest is actually a lot, lot bigger. So I think I'm probably like a 34D at the minute, but I haven't been anywhere to get measured. I'm just guesstimating. Um, so yeah, no boob job and no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> okay, another one is actually a couple um, of this. Do you still have a life coach? I've not heard you talk about it much recently. So yes, I do still have a life coach. Um, I have been with her, Lucy Spicer is her name. I have been with her for basically this whole year. Um, and it is the best, the best money and investment I have ever, ever, ever spent or given to myself. Like in my life, it has been life-changing like honestly I cannot explain how wild it has been also I think it's really really interesting you know how the universe likes to work in its own way and I had followed Lucy for years before I'd ever messaged her and I used to write out messages because I've, I've contemplated having it for a while either therapy or a life coach where she's quite a good mix of both so I'd contemplated I mean I'd messaged her not I'd written messages to her so many times over the last like year, year and a half before I met her and then I just kept deleting them and be like, no, no, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Anyway, I finally bit the bullet off and started with her, I think like end of January, early Feb and it has been amazing and if there was one year of my life where I needed support and I needed a life coach or somebody neutral to chat to weekly, it was this year. So Thank God the universe kept making me delete those messages and then finally send it at the start of this year because I don't know how I could have done this year without um, having her to support me and to work through things with me. And yeah, for me, from my experience, really, really kind of just made sense of my mind. I kind of came to her in a really bad, angry, sad, not nice, critical of myself place. And we kind of worked through all of that. Um, also, like, my personality has changed so much. I have literally, I've got such a grip on my emotions. I've got such an understanding of my emotions. Um, we have just, she's just like unpicked my brain. I don't know how, I can't, the thing is, it's such a personal thing. And so unless you actually have it, you probably won't really understand what I'm talking about. But it was amazing. And for me, life coaching is about working forward 
and kind of dipping into the past but still working forward whereas therapy for me is going back and then kind of working forward but going back most of the time so life coaching is definitely the right thing for me because we worked on the day to day we worked on tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and like the current future whilst fixing issues in the current day with issues in the past I hope this makes sense so it was very much looking forward kind of glancing back which is the opposite I think to therapy because I think therapy is looking back and glancing forward anyway um yeah I cannot recommend her enough literally every single person in my life at some point or the other some point or another in the last six months have said to me like you're like a different person like you're just so different and yeah I absolutely agree <laughs> I think people actually as well when they book in with her you only really well I think the recommended is like a four month run but obviously I've been with her for like 12 months. <laughs> she can't get rid of me. Um, and of course, no discount, not gifted, nothing. It's absolutely, I pay for this 100%. So I actually, basically what she does is she does a call every second week and then you're on like this app called Voxer to her all the time. Um, but I paid double the package so that I could have her weekly. So I've been getting weekly sessions, which I needed. There was quite a lot about Johnny and I in here and our relationship. So one was... Has your relationship ever almost ended? Another was, do you and Johnny argue? Seem like the perfect couple. <laughs> We're not. Another one was, are you and Johnny okay? Another one is, Johnny doesn't really go on your vlogs anymore. Is everything all good with you guys? So quite a lot of concern. I'll just say off the bat, we are absolutely great. We're in the best place we have been in for probably like three years. Again, I think Lucy, my life coach, has a lot to do with that. But yeah, being completely open and transparent with you guys, Johnny and I, we were not in a good place at all. Um, just through stupid things like lack of communication. The thing is, we weren't like we weren't day to day bad, but we definitely lost our spark. We lost our connection. We lost our friendship. We just weren't in a good place, and it was kind of difficult for me and him because there was no reason. Like there was nothing we could put our fingers on that was leading us to be like that. There was nothing that nothing happened like there was no lies there was no distrust there was just nothing that would have caused this it was just it felt like we just grew apart completely as different people um and that hurt it sucked it really 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 sucked and then to cut a long story short um me having my life coaching really helped me realize that i am um, I was getting really bad at communicating. I wasn't talking about my feelings. I wasn't talking about things that annoyed me and everything was like building up, building up, building up, building up and then it would explode. And another part that, another really, really important thing that happened was when Bean died or Bean got diagnosed was actually it. Weirdly, we just never, I don't have to explain it. When Bean got sick, it put everything into perspective and it made both of us just sit and think and be like, what are we doing? Why are we arguing? Why are we arguing like this over a dishwasher? Like really, really stupid things we're arguing over. With being getting sick, it really just kind of made us grow up and made us look at our life and that we actually needed, like we led on each other so much during that period and like we needed each other. And I don't know, it felt like it really just, unfortunately, I don't, I mean, unfortunately being was sick, but the only positive I can take from it is that him being sick made Johnny and I push the reset button and literally from like that day on we have been so so close and in such a lovely place again I kept saying to my friends and my life coach like it feels like we're back in like the dating stage where it was like all fun and exciting and like we just got the spark back okay this is cute do you and your sister have the special twin connection knowing when each other's sad or down or when something's wrong uh absolutely it's so weird I mean she lives in Dubai so for the first 16 years of our lives, 15 years of our lives, we were together non-stop all the time. Then I moved to England for a year. So I was away from her for a year, which was the first time ever. Then she followed me down a year later to England. And then we were both in England for maybe f three, no, like five, four or five years. And then she left to Dubai probably like three years ago. So I haven't lived in a city with her or in the same country as her for years. And it sucks, it's so, so rubbish. But yes, we call every single day non-stop we talk we like text throughout the day non-stop like there's never a minute we're not in contact on whatsapp we talk on instagram we talk on snapchat <laughs> we are just in constant communication but yes if one of us is upset the other one knows immediately um it's weird i don't know you just kind of get this feeling if you're a twin you know what i'm on about but you just kind of get this like gut 
gut like wrench like you kind of just know like you just have this thing and you just know it's so weird um and yeah i think we've always been like that to be honest even if like one of us tries to say like no i'm fine like we can tell straight away that something's up even if she's trying to like hide a surprise from me like i know straight away so yeah we we definitely have that <laughs> I had a couple about the influencer industry and girlfriends and relationships and whether I still am friends with people from the industry and all that jazz. So the short answer is yes. Um, I obviously have Liv and Lauren who are my best friends. They are both my closest girlfriends ever. Liv is in Winchester and she is heavily pregnant so I haven't seen her as much recently. And then Lauren lives in Kent so I do see her quite a lot actually. Um, just depends when she's in London or if I go to her house and see her. So those two are my closest girlfriends ever, ever, ever and outside of this industry as well. Actually, we don't ever really, me, me and Lauren do like industry stuff, like we go to events and things, but I mainly have those friendships completely outside the industry and it's just like a, by chance we all are in the same industry. Other people who are in the industry as in bloggers, other bloggers or influencers, um, yeah, I'd say I'm not super, super close, like I don't know what their like deepest, darkest secrets are and you know, all that jazz, but I do have friends, I would say. Some of them I talk to on DM, some of them I just know from seeing at events and like I know them enough to say hi and have a little conversation, but probably wouldn't ever bother to meet up outside of a work situation. Another thing is we all used to see each other quite a lot. Like Frey and I used to shoot all the time together, but we now both have an assistant and so we shoot with our assistant and so we don't really need to see each other for work in the week. So I guess we have kind of like not really like faded or friendship but we just don't see each other as much and that's purely because we just used to see each other a lot for work saying that I am going for dinner with her very soon <laughs> but it's like everything in in life and all friendships you know you sometimes you're super close sometimes you fade away and you don't talk as much I think with our friend our um, industry there's an element of like actually working together i.e shooting or going to events feels like a probably to you guys and to us feels like girly day out but actually the baseline of it is that it's work and technically the girls in the industry and me were all colleagues does that make sense it's a really nice easy kind of friendship with the girls in the industry because i don't have the kind of friendships where we have to meet up 24 7 and it's just easy i hope this makes sense i don't want it to sound like i haven't I don't want it to sound like i'm not friends with anyone because it's not that it's just the friendships are different and i definitely like to keep my work friendships in one box and my personal friendships in another box okay so there was a few questions about my actual job and how it works, like the logistics of it. How does management work? Um, more about brand, how you work with brands and how you set rates. Um, basically all the stuff people don't talk about. Okay, so it's kind of split into different things. So the way I make money would be from collaborating with a brand. So they pay you a fee and um, you carry out work that is agreed within a contract. And... Yeah, that's that. There's also affiliate links. So you know when we write Afflink, I'm sure a lot of you know this by now, but when we write Afflink, it means affiliate link and it means we earn a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of commission when you buy through that link. It doesn't add anything to you guys' price at all. Um, like you still pay the same price. It's just like a tracking link. So it's kind of like the brand, it's kind of like a little thank you from the brand to say like, we pushed that, we pushed that sale. So here's a little bit for you to enjoy as well. Very, very small percentages though, but obviously that does kind of add up if you do like a YouTube video and there's however many thousands of you guys clicking on the links and buying certain things. So affiliate link is quite a big part of it as well. There's also things like AdSense. So I don't really know how that works, but I have it on YouTube. It doesn't pay much at all and it's very, very variable. So some months, it depends on how much YouTube videos you put out, I think, um, but it's very up and down. Um, so yeah, that's how you make money. The way management works, I've been with the same manager for the last six years, I think. I love her so much. She is based in LA most of the time, but she is English and she comes back and forth. So um, she basically, her and her team handle everything for me. So any emails that come in, they respond to, they go through negotiations with brands. They handle all of that, which I am so grateful for because I hate talking about money. Um, I actually only, because I grew really, really fast on Instagram at the start. I think I started making money. I think I signed with a management within probably, I wanna say like a year, just under a year from starting it. Um, it was so nice, you can grow so quickly back in the day. So yeah, I never really had a chance to 
not even a chance like I did kind of do my own negotiations and stuff for a while but it was never long enough for me to like I don't really remember it you know they also do things like contracts legal contracts I don't really know the ins and outs but I know that they really take care of that side of things which again great because I used to get sent a contract from a brand and just like sign it and never ever read it which is so stupid so yeah management do that and um, they also run kind of like your day-to-day -day. so if I've got meetings and things like I have a shared calendar shared google calendar and they put all of my schedule into my calendar each week and I can just refer to that um what else they send over like briefs for jobs so when you book a job a brand will send you a brief so there'll be certain like information points they want you guys to us to like relay off another one is do you love your job or are there days when you really wish you were doing something else okay kind of kind of two answers to this yes I love it I'm so crazy fortunate to be in this position um it's my dream job I've always wanted to do this and I love it I do love it saying that I have been doing the same thing for six years and there are days where it gets a bit like not boring but like I describe it as like my energy gets stale that's the only way I can describe it I think for me I'm trying to figure this out still I definitely want to be more kind of like at home as in sharing like at home bits more like a day-to-day -day life rather than just fashion um but I love fashion I've always loved fashion even when I was like five years old I'd go into my wardrobe and I'd choose an outfit for myself you know so it's always been something that I want to do and I love doing I think it's just like with anything once you've done it for so long sometimes you just need a little bit of change a little bit of like fresh energy I don't know the short answer is yes I absolutely love it I could not imagine doing anything else and my favorite part probably is vlogging I love vlogging you though sometimes get like vlogging fear like if you don't do it for a while it gets really like you get really anxious uploading a video <laughs> and also um also when I am hormonal I cannot be on camera I am just in such a bad mood and I cannot fake it I have done a couple of videos I mean I do film when I'm hormonal but uh, I have done a couple of videos where I've like pushed myself to film on that day even though I'm just like not in a sociable mood because you have to be sociable it's like chatting to you guys like it's i know it seems like it's just me chatting to a camera but to us it feels like we're chatting to loads of you like i feel like i'm chatting to like friends you know like it feels like you are being sociable anyway so when i film and i'm not in a good mood you guys pick up on it all the time people always will like dm me and be like i hope you're okay you didn't look very happy in your last video and i'm like i'm hormonal <laughs> oh i love it and i'm excited to see where it goes i'm excited to see like you know all the phases in my life that will happen like getting engaged and getting married and having babies like to share all that with you guys and go on those journeys with you guys would be so fun so yeah I love it and I'm excited to see like am I going to be doing this in 10 years like where is the internet going to be in 10 years like is it going to be another TikTok is it going to be a new Instagram like yeah it's, it's kind of it's kind of crazy <laughs> okay I'm going to leave it there because I have been chatting to you guys for so long um my hair and makeup is now all done i'm ready for the day my hair looks so lovely and shiny and smooth and i just love the result of the curls once i've brushed them out with that brush you just give this side a little extra help okay so that is the end of my video i really hope you guys enjoyed it the tangle teaser stuff will all be in the description box and i think that is everything thank you so much for watching i will see you all in my next video bye